hypotenuse leg HL congruence theorem. We're at lesson 4.6. There are four theorems that are used for right triangles that aren't used for acute or obtuse triangles. The first one is leg-leg, that's LL. If the legs of one right triangle are congruent to the legs of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. We also have number two, hypotenuse angle, that's HA. If the hypotenuse and an acute angle of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and acute angle of another right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. We have number three, leg angle, LA. You might even see it called leg acute for leg acute angle. If the leg and an acute angle of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding leg and acute angle of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And that brings us to number four, which is hypotenuse leg congruence, that's HL. So if you're not sure, for a right triangle, we have a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse, that's the long side, okay? And theorem says, if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. We can look at the, the diagrams and the hypothesis. We have a leg that's congruent to a leg and a hypotenuse that's congruent to a hypotenuse. So our conclusion is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, can we use the HL congruence theorem to prove the triangles are congruent? So we have two, tri two diagrams here. For the first one, it would be a yes. It shows one hypotenuse is congruent to the other. We have two right triangles, and we can see the congruence marks on the hypotenuse. For the second one, it would be a no, because we need the hypotenuse to be congruent. It's showing there's two right triangles, one here and one here, but the legs are congruent. So that would be a no, okay? Now, for LL, that would be leg, leg, we would have one leg congruent to another leg, and then the other leg congruent to the other leg, see? For HA, hypotenuse angle, we would have the hypotenuse and one of the acute angles congruent. For LA, that would be leg angle, we'd have one of the legs and one of the acute angles congruent, all right? So we can determine if we can use the HL congruence theorem to prove the triangles are congruent. If we can't, we can tell what else we need to know. So take a look at this diagram. We've got two triangles overlaying each other. We've got triangle VWX and triangle YXW. Now according to this diagram, triangle VWX and triangle YXW are right triangles. We have this triangle and we have this triangles and we can see the right triangle marks. And they share the hypotenuse segment WX. So the hypotenuse for this one is the hypotenuse for this one. And segment WX is congruent to segment XW. So the hypotenuse for this one is congruent to the hypotenuse for this one. That's the reflexive property. And it's given that segment WV is congruent to segment XY. So this is congruent to this. So we have a congruent hypotenuse and we have congruent legs, don't we? So, triangle VWX is congruent to triangle YXW by HL. And, yeah, they shared that hypotenuse, so we knew it was the hypotenuse was congruent. Now, for triangle VWZ and triangle YXZ, that's this little triangle and this little triangle, the conclusion can't be proved by HL, hypotenuse leg. According to the diagram, triangle VWZ and triangle YXZ are right triangles. We see the right triangle marks. And segment WV is congruent to segment XY, so this is congruent to this. But we don't know that the hypotenuse segment WZ is congruent to hypotenuse XZ. We don't know if this is congruent to this. So... If a diagram is confusing, we can redraw the triangles separately and label them and mark the congruent corresponding parts. So up here for this one, it was kind of great that they were together because we could see that the hypotenuse were congruent because they shared it by the reflexive property, okay? Three pairs of congruent corresponding parts are necessary for angle-angle side, AAS. So we have a pair of angles congruent, a pair of this pair of angles congruent, and these sides congruent. So it's three pairs. And 
angle side angle, we would need three pairs. We've got this pair of angles, this side, and those pair of angles. For hypotenuse leg HL, we first must prove that the triangles are right triangles. So here's a hypotenuse angle theorem that we're going to prove, okay? So that's HA. That's this one, all right? So it's given that segment KM is perpendicular to segment JL. So KM is perpendicular to JL. And JM is congruent to LM. We can see that this is congruent to this one. It's also given that angle JMK is congruent to angle LMK, these two little angles here. We need to prove that triangle JKM is congruent to triangle LKM. So our first statement is that segment KM is perpendicular to segment JL. That was given. Number two, angle JKM and angle LKM are right angles. That's the definition of perpendicular. So we know these two are right angles. Number three, angle JKM is congruent to angle LKM. That's right congruent, that's right angle congruence theorem. Number four, segment JM is congruent to segment LM and angle JMK is congruent to angle LMK. That's given, okay? And that brings us to triangle JKM is congruent to triangle LKM for angle, angle, side. We use steps three and four. Okay, so for hypotenuse angle, we've got hypotenuse that are congruent, and we've got an angle that's congruent, all right? We could even say uh, for angle, angle, side, we've got an angle, this 90 degree one, that angle, and that side, see? Our next lesson is triangle congruence, CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's going to be 4.7. Let me back up a bit here without tripping over my dog. And here's the whole board. So I hope you have a great day. And don't forget, I'm on Twitter. And if you have a question, you can always DM me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.